Today, I'll be casting this ring using X1 castable resin, and I'll also be giving away three bottles. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, a few weeks back, I did a Sarayan Tech cast user guide video, and by popular request, today I'll be doing the same thing with Bluecast X1. And yes, as stated, Bluecast has kindly agreed to donate three bottles to my viewers. So look out for that giveaway later on. Now, you may have seen me casting the Cuban link chain in situ a few weeks ago. I like the look of it so much, I decided to design a ring, though this one has fixed links to allow for exact sizing. When I designed the ring, I decided to incorporate a thick metal feed ring above and below the delicate parts of the Cuban links. I also decided to incorporate the sprues into my design. To bring this to life, we need, of course, to 3D print it, and I opted to use my Anycubic D2. The biggest issue with any resin is obtaining the correct settings, and I have to give Bluecast their due. They are probably the best castable resin when it comes to this issue. Head over to their website and click download. From there, choose your resin, in this case X1. And then scroll down until you reach your printer. It's also worth reading these helpful notes to get the best from this resin. Now in fairness, Bluecast do work hard at keeping these pages up to date. But as you can see here, there's no D2. Now don't panic. Just head over to the downloads page, scroll down until you see these YouTube box profiles download. Click the button. And there we have just about every printer we could possibly want. I selected D2 and downloaded the appropriate profile directly to your two box. And I didn't even bother checking it. As it turned out, the settings were spot on. She two box. Yeah, I know, not everyone's favorite. But there are so many slices out there that Bluecast obviously had to choose a default. And this one is, in fairness, free. As lychee is my personal favorite, I added support using that slicer. Bluecast X1 prints very well, but it absolutely must have thick supports. Bluecast actually recommend a minimum of 0.4 mm tips. Now you can use thin supports as well, but you need some big boys to really anchor the print in place. So I used a lot of 1 mm tips, as a successful print with many supports is better to me than a failed print with economical supporting. I then saved the supported print as an STL. I could have copied the provided settings across to Lee manually, but I'm lazy. So I opened up my supported STL in G2 box, and then I was ready to go. Like most resins, it needs a good shake to get going. But again, like most, it needs to be warm. It prints best within a temperature range of 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. You can achieve this in two easy ways. One, place the bottle in a microwave and blast it for 30 seconds, but no longer or you'll cook it. Two, use an enclosure heater, which is my personal preference. The print was a great success, and it comes out looking a very deep green, but it's also pretty hard to see what's going on under all this excess resin. So to make cutting away supports much easier, I always give things a quick wash. X1 does not use IPA. This resin cures by chemical reaction. And to properly achieve this, Bluecast tell us that we must use 91 to 99% ethyl alcohol. And this is the ethanol that I personally use. However, to reduce wastage, I keep my dirty X1 ethanol in a jar like this. Dunk the print into this and agitate lightly for about 10 seconds. 
You can then shake off the excess or if you have compressed air, blast it dry. Now you can see what you're doing to remove the supports carefully. As I said, X1 cures by chemical reaction. And to do this, you're going to need some clean ethanol. There are three approaches you can take. One, place the print in a container of clean ethanol and wait around 12 minutes. Two, place the print in an ordinary wash station for 10 minutes. Or three, Place the print in a container of clean ethanol and place that in an ultrasonic cleaner for up to five minutes. This is my preference as it really gets into all the nooks and crannies nice and quickly. These stated times are a guide, not a fixed rule. Just look for the colour change and then maybe give it another 30 seconds. This took just three minutes and you can actually see that it's now a light green color. Now we need to dry away the ethanol and again, the best tool is compressed air. You can use a hairdryer, but it will be slower. You should immediately start to see the majority of the surface turning white. Some areas may remain dark, but as long as most are white, you'll be fine. I understand you can use an ordinary UV cure station rather than use this whitening air blasting procedure. But I also understand there's no color change in that process and you also have to UV cure at a minimum of 15 minutes. So I take the easier whitening option where I can see what's going on. But you can always, if you prefer, safely UV cure it afterwards as well. That's just an option, not an instruction, proving that there is some flexibility here. After that, set it aside for 15 minutes just to let the ethanol fully evaporate away. You can now sprue the print using normal wax sprues, though I don't need to as I incorporated sprues into my print design. However, X1 does take sprues very well as you can see in my messy example. After that, it's metal casting as normal. X1 can burn out at just 680 degrees Celsius, but it's recommended to stick with a peak temperature of 750 whilst following your typical burnout schedule. X1 can also cope with rapid burnouts. That's looking good. This is going to take a lot of filing. Clean up with this mini belt sander is so much easier. Before we get to the reveal, let's talk about the giveaway. Bluecast has kindly offered to give away three bottles of X1 to anyone who can be reached by an ordinary postal service. It's one bottle per entrant, and to enter, just place a comment below this video saying, Gimme X1. You can also say anything else you like, as long as you include that small phrase within your remarks. And there we have it. I'm very pleased with it. The X1 printed perfectly and burned away cleanly, leaving a design that I'm truly happy with. I hope you enjoyed this one guys, take care and thanks for watching.